Hi, I'm Sarisa Sudekrin. In this video, I'll show you how John Carpenter used a special kind of lens called an anamorphic lens to scare the hell out of us in Halloween. Anamorphic lenses are a different type of lens that looks like an oval and squeezes the image horizontally while maintaining the height. Later, you de-squeeze it back to its original shape. The big question is, why on earth is this squeezing and de-squeezing useful? It goes back to one of the fundamental reasons anamorphic lenses were invented. You get a wider field of view without the wide angle distortion. Most times if you use a wide angle lens up close, the face distorts. It's dramatic, but not very flattering. With anamorphic lenses, you get the same field of view, but the face looks more natural. There are a lot more cool things to learn about anamorphic, so I'll link to my detailed video guide below in case you want to learn more. But for this video, this one feature that's more horizontal view without distorting faces made Carpenter's Halloween look different from other low-budget slasher films of the time. Anamorphic lenses are slower, which means they aren't as good in low light as normal spherical lenses. That's a disadvantage. For Halloween, they use a legendary Panavision C-series anamorphic lenses that only open to about T2.3 to T2.8. Decent, but definitely not that great for low light. And Halloween is all about the darkness and shadows. Director John Carpenter and cinematographer Dean Kundi could have both used spherical faster lenses and made their lives easier. Anamorphic lenses are not easy to focus, and they are more expensive to rent. A super low budget film like Halloween could have saved some money by doing what everyone else did, but they chose anamorphic. And I think it works to this day because John Carpenter is one of the few great directors who truly compose beautiful anamorphic frames. It wouldn't have done it if it didn't serve a visual purpose. Let me start with one shot, seemingly innocuous. It's, it's daytime, peaceful, everything's green, bright, and cheerful. A nice neighborhood and three beautiful girls walk down the road. A regular lens would have captured all three girls, but not a lot of the background. In this case, you can see the background is empty, really empty. John Carpenter carefully builds up the scene from the school all the way to their homes. We follow their mundane conversation but throughout every frame, what we subconsciously take in is the fact that this neighborhood is mostly deserted at this time of day. You wouldn't get the same sense of isolation with spherical lenses. Here are some shots cropped to a more traditional 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio. You don't really feel quite the same about the neighborhood. It's not about one or two shots, but the buildup of tension in small increments. By the time the car arrives, you are scared. We know for sure the place is deserted, when one of the girls yells out and the car stops, our hearts stop. This guy would dare to do this in the middle of the day, in the middle of the street, but only because it's empty. If John Carpenter hadn't shown us that, we would be wondering why the girls are so scared. Where are the others? But now we know there are no others within easy reach. The same is true later when Annie sees Michael behind the bush. There's no place to run or hide, and that makes Mike Myers all the more threatening. And that's also why you get the jump scare at the end of the sequence when Bracket apparently pops out of nowhere, even with such a wide frame. This false sense of emptiness is used very effectively throughout Halloween, and the sudden jump scares are more jolting because we've been led to believe the place is empty. Instead of moving the camera around and showing us how empty a place is, Carpenter was able to achieve the same result with greater economy because you could see more, and he didn't have to distort faces and make anybody look grotesque even Mike Myers. Anamorphic lenses have some advantages and disadvantages in framing. One of the great advantages is in car interior scenes. You can see the whole car and the person without feeling the camera was cramped up in there. The car feels spacious and roomy, not claustrophobic. Quentin Tarantino uses similar framing techniques in his films. There's another feature of some anamorphic lenses that are important as well. The biggest is called barrel distortion. Barrel distortion is what you get when perpendicular lines at the edges of the frame bend outwards, like a barrel. Halloween is chock full of such distortions, and they're not always by accident. In this scene in school, you can see how barrel distortion actually accentuates greater space. It rounds out the world even more, so you feel there's greater space between the foreground and the background. This is extremely useful in some scenes, like this one, towards the end when Laurie runs to the neighbor's house and screams for help. The camera is handheld, but you can see how the barrel distortion helps to create more space between Laurie and the neighbors. They're right there, but there's a world of space between them. It was achieved 
with lenses, you simply wouldn't get the same look with spherical lenses. With a normal lens, you would have to get in closer and the character would become much larger in the frame. She would block out more in the center if you wanted to see the edges. With anamorphic, the characters show more of the center and you see the edges as well. A small thing, but it adds up greatly. The whole point of Halloween is how Mike Myers is like the shark in Jaws, a force of nature that will keep on coming. In Halloween, you get that sense because the location is wide open. People are all close together, and it still doesn't make a difference to him. He's going to hunt, and that's scary. A villain who comes in plain sight. The last way anamorphic lenses helped was to get two shots into one. Carpenter could basically merge different transitions without moving the camera much, like this shot at the wide room where the camera pulls back to reveal the telephone. The best use of this can be seen in the climax in the famous shot of Mike popping out from the darkness. He doesn't have to come in from behind or from under the bed or behind a door. He's right there on screen in the same shot. Even on an ultra low budget film like Halloween, John Carpenter was able to use anamorphic lenses to create the world of Haddonfield in a perspective you would not normally see. It's the sense of space you get with anamorphic that makes it uniquely different. If you like anamorphic distortions and blue flares, a lot of lenses can give you that, even on small budgets. He didn't have those back then. If you just want the field of view without all the anamorphic distortions and aberrations, you can opt for anamorphic lenses like the Arri Master anamorphics, which are my favorite anamorphics. I hate distortions, but that doesn't make them useless. It's like different kinds of paint. A painter uses whatever to make art. And in Halloween's case, it's our pants. If you're planning to make a low-budget film, you'll definitely want to check out my free blueprint. You'll find the link to it below. If you like this video, please hit like and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell you'll see on the right. Because every time you hit the bell, Mike Myers rises again on Halloween.